Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Open at Microsoft. Today we're going to be continuing on with our series of Dapper videos, having Nick Greenfield from the Dapper team come and talk to us about Dapper resiliency. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, my name is Aaron Crawfus. I'm a senior product manager on the Azure Incubations team, and today I'm joined by Nick Greenfield. Hey, how's it going? Cool. Thanks for joining us today, Nick. Now, um, I've heard a lot about this new thing called Dapper Resiliency. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about it and maybe uh, in a little bit show us a demo of that? I'd love to learn more. So as we mentioned today, we're going to deep dive into one of my favorite capabilities, which is uh, Dapper Resiliency. And uh, We consider Dapper Resiliency as a building block that helps microservice developers build invincible applications. And that's exactly what we're going to do here today. Cool. Well, yeah, I'd love to learn a little bit more about how, yeah, as we saw with um, the introduction to Dapper with uh, Paul Yukowitz a couple uh, episodes ago, yeah, like all about the Dapper building blocks. So yeah, can you dive in a little bit, tell us about how we can take those building blocks and supercharge them with uh, Dapper resiliency? Uh, sure. So before we get into like how Dapper resiliency works, maybe we'll spend one or two minutes just talking about like why is resiliency important when you're building a microservice or a distributed application? So, you know, as we all are probably mostly well aware, microservices are gaining a ton of popularity um, as developers are, are looking to uh, modernize their applications, right? Because of the numerous benefits, there's independent scaling with microservices, there's uh, reducing single points of failure, they allow for more flexibility in the types of uh, languages and technologies that can be used for each service. Um, but what I think is often overlooked are a lot of the challenges that come with microservices. You know, with microservices, and if you look at my screen here, you can see I have a, an application uh, that's a hypothetical microservice application, but you can see there's a lot of many moving pieces, right? And that, you know, statistically increases the chance of an error or some fault to occur when these services are intercommunicating with each other. And so that's why, you know, when you're architecting and building these types of applications, it's really important, it's critical to build them with uh, fault tolerance or resiliency in mind so that if an error does occur somewhere along the lines of your application, uh, it can recover seamlessly back to an operational status as, as, you know, as fast as possible. Very cool. So yeah, so then what are some of those errors that users might see and um, how do we think about protecting against those errors, uh, great, not just in Dapper, but in general? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, some errors can be transient errors where a request from one service might just uh, fail for any given reason, maybe a network uh, outage. Um, it could be hardware failures where uh, some hardware will fail and that service will just become unhealthy. So um, yeah, that's just two examples I would say of some uh, you know most common uh, types of faults that your applications could in, could encounter. Great. So yeah, it sounds like that's a lot of kind of thinking through all the different errors and a lot of complexity then that traditionally would be up to the developer to try and work around. Is that usually the, like, have to build that right into your microservice? Uh, yeah, you, so typically there's, there are frameworks that, you know, you, you do couple that into your applications code itself. Um, but here we'll take a look at this, this scenario here that I have on my screen where, um, in this case, we're using Dapper for our microservices and, uh, you could, this one, this, this example, it's leveraging many different Dapper APIs, as you can see. So it's using PubSub for message queuing, uh, asynchronous message passing. It's using the service invo invoke for uh, asynchronous calls, state management, you name it, right? And so you, you could couple your resiliency into your code, uh, you know, retries and things like that uh, with your application business logic, but Dapper allows you to actually wrap all of these API calls in uh, resiliency policies in a declarative way. And we'll take a look at what that looks like in just a second. Um, but the, the purpose here is, or the point here is that all of your different Dapper APIs that your application might be using, you can wrap in resiliency um, and not have to couple that with your application code. Oh, that's awesome. So now all that, that, the very simple Dapper API call, which we'll cover in a second. So it sounds like you just get all of that resiliency just for free. You don't, there's no like updating my microservices with all of that complexity. It's all handled by Dapper. Exactly. And let's take a look at that right now, right? So um, I guess we'll, we'll back up and just talk about what is Dapper resiliency support. And then we'll talk about that declarative model where it's a decouple from app code. Um, and then we'll show a demo because everyone loves demos. So, um, so Dapper resiliency today, it supports three types of resiliency patterns. There's retries, which are just like what it sounds. I can retry a failed operation. Uh, timeouts, which is I can early terminate uh, long running operations. 
and then circuit breakers, uh, where I can back off an unhealthy service um, once I encounter a certain amount of errors in a row. Um, and so what you see here is uh, a, a resiliency uh, spec is what we refer to it. So this is a configuration in Dapper for how I define my resiliency behaviors. And again, we'll walk through this when we go through the demo and then how I apply those resiliency policies that I've defined to my application targets. And so with Dapper, that could be uh, service to service call. So any, any application that I'm calling, you know, through this invoke API or maybe some through my message passing, uh, whether I'm publishing messages to my message broker or subscribing to that broker, I can, if an error was to occur, I can, you know, re retry or, or bounce back from that. Um, yeah, with, with Dapper resiliency. So, um, this is what a configuration will look like. And if you're up for it, I can kind of walk through an example in practice. Yeah, I'd love to take a look and see what, in addition to what the declarative thing, the spec here are talking about. But yeah, what does this look like in like a user's code, and what's the flow of that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's actually look at a scenario here. And so this is one of our quick starts today. You can actually get hands on with this if you went to the Dapper quick starts and you tried the resiliency quick start. Um, it's an oversimplified scenario, but it really just to get the purpose of like how resiliency works. So in this scenario here that we're looking at. I have a single microservice that I'll have on my machine. It's dapperized. It's persisting. It's using the state management API. So it's persisting state and making operations to a state store, which in this case I have as a Redis container running on my machine. And so we look exactly what this code looks like. We don't. We won't go through it um, too much. But at a high level, I just have a loop. This is so .NET. So I have. A, I have a loop that I'm going from one to 100. And I'm going for that index of my loop, I'm gonna create an order. So the order ID will be the index of, of what I'm currently on looping through. And so I'm gonna save the order uh, of index one to start with to my state store. And then I'm going to get the state after I save it to make sure it persisted and retrieve it. And then I'm gonna delete it. So it's gonna do that for order one, order two, order three, all the way up to 100. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate a failure and the easiest way to do that is I'm just actually gonna stop the Redis container on my machine. And so when the operation to persist or retrieve state to my state store, it's actually gonna fail. It's not gonna be able to make that operation successfully because that container is no longer running. But that's okay because I've run this microservice with that configuration, that Dapper resiliency configuration, which you see here on the right, um, uh, again, completely decoupled from my application code that you see in the bottom left. And so if you look at this uh, on the right-hand side, my resiliency CRD, my spec, uh, you can see that it's really made up of two major sections. There's the policy section, which, uh, uh, or is where I define my, my, my retries and my circuit breakers. And you can see here, I have two policies. I have a retry called retry forever, which does exactly what it sounds. I'm gonna retry indefinitely, waiting five seconds in between each retry. And then I have a circuit breaker, which actually should uh, take precedence um, because what I'm saying is when I encounter five consecutive failures in a row, back off. So don't try to make any more requests to my state store. There's a timeout that I specified of five seconds, wait five seconds, and then retry again. And that's what that max request one means. Retry one request, it's kind of this test request to see has my service has it been able to recover or is it still in this weird failed state? If it's successful, it's going to let traffic resume uh, as it normally would. And if it doesn't, if it's not successful and that operation fails, it's going to back off again, wait five seconds and kind of go through that continuous loop of checking to see whether or not it's had a chance to recover. That's awesome. Um, yeah, let's, yeah. I'd, I'd love to dig, yeah, dig in and see what that would uh, looks like. It looks it's way too simple to get all of that benefit <laughs> as part of that. Yeah, it, it, and it is quite simple, and that's what I love about this feature. It's it's really easy to use. It's really intuitive um, when you when you start getting your hands on it. So um, what we'll do is we'll switch over to my uh, terminal and we'll we'll run this service and we will um, simulate that failure. So here again, I'm in my quick starts repo, and this is the state management repo. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my microservice here, my order processor. And it's going to start up. It starts with a dapper sidecar. And you should see in the loop, I have some logs in my application, that it's persisting state one, it's getting state two, or one, deleting state one. And then it's going to go to two, three, and so on and so forth. And so everything's operational. Everything's healthy so far. What I'm going to do, oops, I need to 
exit full screen. What I'm going to do is stop, hop over to my other terminal and I'm going to stop that container right now. So I'm going to Docker stop adapter Redis. So Redis is no longer uh, running on my machine. And what we should see is some errors, right? And so you can see it's error processing operation retrying. So I, those are my retries. And uh, Dapper by default is quiet, so it's not super noisy. It doesn't want to flood logs, but there's a bunch of retries that are going on in the background here. And again, we, we show one retry. There are metrics that you can look and see to see how many retries really occurred. Um, but in this case here, I'm uh, we're just showing that one retry. But what we should see is once we hit that five consecutive failures, my circuit breaker now takes effect. And that is what oh, you yeah. can see is that the state of my circuit breaker went from a closed, which means traffic's running, the circuit's closed, traffic's running, and you know, normally to open, meaning it's stopped. Uh, and now you can see it doing that check, right? It's going to that half open, letting that one request through to see, hey, have I have I healed and traffic can resume? And it's not because that container, that Redis container still stopped on my machine. So if I go back now and I restart that Redis container, let me go back to my code. Now it's going to check to say, hey, can I go through that request? Can I send a request and have it uh, work as expected? And in this case, it does. It did recover. So you can see my my app code was oh, able yeah. to recover seamlessly. You know, so something like this was to happen out in the in the wild or in production. I can like feel confident if I walked away that my app can you know self heal. So yeah, that's that resiliency in a, in a nutshell. That's awesome. So now here, like we uh, the code we're looking at, just a few lines of .NET. So it sounds like resiliency should work with every language Dapper supports and every SDK. Is that true? <clears throat> yeah, that's that's uh, absolutely true. So uh, again. Uh, it's not coupled to the language uh, or the SDKs that you, you would use. Resiliency is a configuration. You can configure it through a, a YAML file that you'll provide to your applications and its sidecar when they start up. So when I start my app and it has its Dapper sidecar, it's going to look for that resiliency configuration by default, and it's going to apply it. So any language, um, any framework uh, can leverage resiliency. It's, it's completely a language uh, agnostic. Awesome. And then I know that Dapper supports, we saw in, the, in a previous video, that there's this huge catalog of different components. So perhaps you're not using a local Redis container, you might be using Azure Cosmos DB. Now, it sounds like the resiliency just works the same no matter what component. Is that true as well? Uh, that's absolutely true. So you have a component name, and you that's how you apply these policies. Uh, I didn't show it uh, in the earlier screen, but um, there's a target section in your in your. Uh, in your spec where you're applying these policies and you apply them by your, your component name or your Dapper app IDs, which are those unique identifiers for whatever component or service you're, you're referencing. And so I can switch the underlying provider of that service, whether it's Redis to uh, some other state store provider, depending on maybe it's uh, something in the cloud uh, uh, and, and resiliency will just work. I actually I don't even have to change any of my code. Uh, it's just changing the actual component type um, it's a simple configuration change, and you get full functionality across all the components with this. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining today. I learned a lot about resiliency. Uh, one last question. Where can uh, viewers go to learn more about Dapper and about uh, resiliency? Uh, yeah, good question. So uh, first, I would say the docs, so docs.dapper.io uh, that has uh, a bunch of information around how to uh, architect a, a resiliency in your applications. And uh, the Quick Starts repo is a great way to try out resiliency and get hands-on just like what I showed today. So we have an example, this was the, our, our state management. So it shows resiliency working with some component, in this case, Redis. But then we have another example for service invocation. So that's one microservice uh, communicating directly to another microservice and how you can apply resiliency there. I'd say those are two really good places to start. Awesome. I'm going to go check that out right now. Well, thanks again for joining. We learned a ton about Dapper resiliency, and we'll see you next time at the, uh, the next Dapper video on Open at Microsoft. <laughs>